Welcome, uh, Professor Dr. Rashi Hesky, Professor of Information Systems and Academic Director of the UC Berlin Campus. Uh, presentation named Sustainable Production and Digital Transformation from Theory to Practice. Uh, hello, Professor Rav. How are you doing? Yes, good evening. Uh, I'm very happy here actually to be part of this event. I hope uh, you can uh, hear me well and see my screen as well. First of all, I would like to extend a big thanks to the organizers. Uh, for this event, um, bringing all the different uh, disciplines together. I think what I heard yesterday and today, uh, it's uh, very much worthwhile to discuss these issues from different perspectives. And uh, today, actually, um, my topic, as you have announced, I'm zooming more into the uh, organization now compared to the two previous uh, speakers. Uh, looking up what is happening in the uh, corporate itself, in the manufacturing industry, uh, about sustainable production and the transformation. And uh, technically, the uh, problem closest related to what uh, 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 presented regarding the huge amount of potential in terms of energy saving in smart cities or in other uh, contexts. And I will pick up on this. Uh, actually, I'm uh, happy to see him around also here for this session. I remember well that you said yesterday that uh, when the stakeholders understand the benefit of the digitalization, they will move into this direction. Uh, fortunately, it seems like in production, sustainable production, the things are not that easy and uh, I would like to debate with you towards the end uh, what makes stakeholders moving into this direction. I think this is one of the most critical issues and it's much more a management and business uh, debate than a technical debate uh, that uh, we, the title might indicate. Okay, as a teaser I would like to reuse um, if my screen moves, hopefully not this way, maybe I have to start again. Yes, uh, too much. What happened here? Sorry, I have to share my screen again. I'm hoping that it will work. Okay, so I like I like to reuse uh, this rather gloomy picture, which I think uh, is not for me something uh, which encourages me to <laughs> move into digital sustainability if it would look like this. You see this uh, rather young uh, farming computer geek male, of course, who is, does not seem to be much interested in Mother Nature, but rather in his iPad or laptop uh, tablet and uh, what he sees is machines. Uh, the soil does not look so much um, fruitful anymore either, the sun is going down. If this is the future of digitalization and food production, um, I'm not sure that we are on a good road for sustainability, at least uh, looking at the emotions that uh, might be uh, related to this picture. So what my uh, question actually is today, uh, how the digital transformation which we are undergoing and so many companies also in the manufacturing industry are moving in this direction, how can this contribute to sustainable production? Okay, and uh, what the program is for the half hour that I want to talk, uh, from theory to practice. In the first part, I will clarify just a little bit what uh, sort of is the conception um, behind the construct of sustainable production, also the same for digitalization. And I will look in a bit more detail and I ask you to follow uh, me a little bit into material flow management uh, as a method where, which can combine digitalization and sustainable production. And uh, in theory, it looks like this could be a game changer uh, from many aspects. And uh, we will see if uh, this is actually the case or not. In the more practical part, um, actually I'm continuing the HTW story of today. Um, we also have, uh, a number of you may know that we do have an ongoing project called SUSTAIN, uh, which is a collaboration project between GUC and HTW, which implements material flow applications. And I will give you a few examples from there. 
and uh, share experiences that we have uh, to see or discuss with you. Are stakeholders now able to move towards sustainable production? Are they willing? Uh, what stands maybe in the way? What kind of uh, prerequisites does it take? Uh, I think these are the interesting questions at the end. Good. I, with this audience, I guess I do not need to uh, explain in detail that sustainability is a comprehensive uh, challenge, uh, that sustainable pro pro production is embedded in many other um, aspects which are related to, um, to sustainability, and this has been mentioned already yesterday and also today. Uh, I guess you are all aware of uh, the sustainability goals for our topic today. It is mainly the uh, number nine and uh, 12 here, which uh, building resilient infrastructures, promoting sustainable industrialization, um, foster innovation in this direction, and also to ensure the sustainable consumption and uh, not only the production patterns, but uh, to look at the whole life cycle of product and production. Okay, so what does this mean more for sustainable production? There is some, meanwhile, quite a bit of uh, conceptualization and even academic literature in this direction. Uh, we do not have uh, the time to go all into this. I'm also, my field is not uh, operations as such, but just to um, give you an idea what the scope is, yeah, like uh, the US uh, Environmental Protection Agency uh, defines sustainable production as the creation of manufactured products through economically sound processes that minimize negative environmental impacts while conserving energy and natural resources. So it is, has this environmental impact um, minimization and also enhances employee community and product safety. So there are also social aspects being mentioned. Um, and there's a journal of um, sustainable production and consumption. Uh, so here the discussion is from the beginning uh, to end looking at the whole life cycle. This is also very important that we do not only look on production inside uh, the, the firm itself, uh, but look at products from the life cycle aspect. Uh, so um, including the supply chain, including the uh, deliverables and how products are being used and recycled or not in order to take this all into account. And this can be defined as production and use of products and services in a manner that it is socially beneficial, economically, economically viable and environmentally reliant over the whole life cycle. So I want to emphasize this life cycle. Okay, so this is just for us to um, understand or to remind you that uh, what kind of common ground uh, we are discussing here. Uh, I think this is helpful to look at it if we look more into sustainable manufacturing itself, that uh, two, three ingredients are crucial. Of course, we want, uh, in the end, we have products that have a life cycle and uh, that is what uh, where the business um, makes its uh, or the business model is related to, uh, and uh, we have the processes that are producing these products, and we have systems uh, that are supporting the manufacturing, uh, and this is where the digitalization comes in, uh, uh, which of course influences both the processes and the products. And this has to do with innovation when we are discussing how to move further in this direction. We should always keep in mind that we need to move um, aspects in all three elements of uh, this triangle to have a, an appropriate effect here. Okay, same little bit warm up for digitalization. Uh, it, it, of course, we have an ongoing movement of uh, moving things to be digital uh, in offices, in industry, and in manufacturing. It is at first mainly concerned with uh, trying to optimize existing uh, processes or to re-engineer processes and to make them more effective and efficient. But when nowadays, when the word digitalization or digital um, transformation is being uh, mentioned, then it is embracing even a wider scope uh, 
in terms of using digital technologies to change a business model and to provide new revenue and value producing opportunities. And value producing can also be sustainability issues that are added to the existing. Okay. So, digitalization means evaluating, re engineering, re imagining the way we are doing business. Uh, or just uh, trying to uh, computerize existing ways of production or doing otherwise of things otherwise. This is already a couple of years old, this picture, but it's just for you to understand um, more of the differences of digitalization tries to extend the previous view of um, IT driven industrialization. That the focus is more, uh, more in, not only on the processes, but also including the business models. Uh, that uh, on uh, the lower corner, it's not about efficiency and effectiveness. We are looking on the new uh, value types of value creation, uh, uh, the more increasing digital leadership, not only IT and service management or production management. And also the stakeholder management is much more extended, uh, embracing also the uh, external customers or other external stakeholders, and uh, also to look at uh, internal stakeholders more as partners um, than we have been doing this before. Both aspects come along when uh, digital transformation is being uh, mentioned. Just for you that uh, have a little bit of your background of this discussion. I think this is enough. Uh, let us move on to be a bit more practical. What does this mean when we uh, companies are upgrading their IT infrastructures to uh, in direction digitalization? Keywords like uh, Industry 4.0, Digital Twins, whatever you name it, basically is uh, same. Uh, in terms of we trying to model all of our physical items, physical aspects that are relevant for our production and uh, of all of the products and to give it sort of a digital existence as well, um, ideally at like a digital twin. So we have a complete uh, mirror of this so we can deal with it electronically. And this is what the picture is aiming at uh, every single bottle that is being filled has its digital representation uh, from the control of what is then inside, how much, uh, when, where will it go, where it's going to be delivered, if there are complaints uh, from, uh, um, then how can I trace it back or even back to the suppliers where I have uh, the premium for possible of suppliers had been uh, delivering the pre-products. Uh, you can and, uh, you see so many um, other numbers representing and figures representing production uh, machinery and their uh, maintenance and their uh, performance issues. So this is the idea of where companies are moving when they are uh, upgrading the infrastructure towards uh, digitalization, especially in the industry. Uh, going back to the, the farming example, also it is, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure if it, I should call it scary or not, but it is the, definitely the future is moving in this direction that you even have texting, uh, cows texting now to um, messages to uh, the farmers about what they need or not. And uh, why I'm bringing this picture is uh, that um, although this looks a bit more sunny than the first one, uh, you do not find any hint here in this picture regarding sustainability. Okay? It's all in the direction of exploitation uh, and uh, does not seem to have anything else in mind. So uh, just to remind us, going digital alone does not mean that sustainability will be on the agenda. So this is an extra item that we need to add, and this is why the discussion is important. The, um, uh, for in the IS or information systems community, uh, the, uh, yeah, the discussion is still an emerging topic in that sense. 
that uh, you have um, uh, tracks here, for example, at this uh, MSIS American conference, uh, and it centers around data analytics, uh, artificial intelligence for sustainability, but also sustainable transformation. Um, it is not a mainstream topic yet, uh, just to also to alert you that this still needs agenda setting in the future. Okay, what is the core of uh, what we want to, to look at today? I should keep uh, the time in mind also. Uh, we want to, where, where does digitalization and uh, sustainability and production meet? It is about saving resources and reducing production costs. So the idea is um, the, from the production perspective, the management of energy and raw material is usually underestimated, which is somehow surprising, but it seems to be the case that studies have shown that the savings or potential of uh, modern planning methods for manufacturing companies is greatest here in the material management. Uh, so there are, for example, uh, studies that, uh, this is from a couple of years ago, five years ago, German manufacturing industry that 43% of the cost are, um, of operating expenses go into the materials. And uh, so there is still a lot of room for savings if done in a smart way. So here is the starting point where uh, we can do something uh, in terms of saving resources and reducing production costs by this way, hopefully creating a win-win situation. How this is being done, uh, we try to use innovative software that facilitates the collection analysis of data on material flows, on energy flows, and tries to visualize the results or provide other kinds of analytics. Here you see a so-called Sankey uh, diagram, what do you see besides the different colors? There is an input of more than 4 billion uh, British thermal units per hour in this production process. And it traces in detail for every time you have the color changes, there is a production step. And it traces exactly where this energy is going and where the losses are and where we can, where are maybe the possibilities for um, the recycling and saving and how to quantify this and also to give it uh, a cost um, pri price tag so that we have more options um, to, for improvements. So the exact recording of production data and its processing uh, creates a sound basis that supports management in its concrete decision-making processes. This is the assumption. Okay? The method which is uh, related to this is called material flow management, and it has um, a few sub-methods of the material flows um, to uh, how the materials and also the energy uh, how this is actually going through uh, the production step by step and document its input and output. We do a life cycle assessment. We've seen in the beginning that uh, we want to look at products from the whole life cycle aspect. This is also important. And uh, also we want to relate it to economic uh, factors of uh, the firm. And uh, this is called material flow cost accounting. Um, and uh, I will show it in uh, the next picture how this actually what is the difference to the uh, traditional cost accounting or in this picture afterwards. This is usually how things are being done. The software identifies, it opens the black box of the production, has all of the production steps and then traces all of the materials and energies. And here you can see the, the differences in terms of also in cost uh, accounting. So on the first row, this is just a technical identification. Where does the material and energy flow uh, to? What is actually going into the product? And what is actually going into the waste? And uh, the traditional cost accounting, of course, balances all what we are needing as an input to produce a certain output. But it does not distinguish between the value of the product itself and the value of the waste. And here, uh, the material flow cost accounting is trying to uh, improve this in this corner so that uh, actually we can balance uh, step by step which uh, investments really go to the product and where do we in invest in waste actually and is it really waste and maybe we can uh, make use of this waste uh, in a different way 
uh, uh, to give it link or whatever, or make it a other product, or just to see for possibilities. So uh, trying to quantify and to monitorize what is going on in production from this process. This is the idea of the whole material flow uh, management. Um, okay. Uh, and on the basis of this, from left to right, uh, you see the, the, the on left side is an existing cacao roasting, and on the right side there are improvements, and you can simulate then you know, how, for example, reusing the bean waste of the cacao or the heat recovery, how this improves the process and the overall balance of uh, the production. Okay, and you can then uh, determine the overall value, uh, the carbon footprint. You can compare with other databases, uh, global warming potential. Uh, there are certain indices which are uh, sort of recorded and uh, recorded in databases for which you can compare, if uh, sort of as benchmarks to see if uh, you are reaching your the aim that you should uh, reach. Or not. The success factors for all of this, and uh, this is where now we are slowly moving into the practice issue, is on one hand, we said we know digital twins, okay. Uh, the ingredients that we need is on one hand the modeling. Uh, we need to model the process of production with all the input and output and the exact transformation, how much of each component is transformed into how much of the other output components. And we need data, real data from the actual production processes. Both of these are challenges. Uh, there is software for this, like uh, mentioned Umberto here, and uh, I took many of the pictures also from uh, the supplier of the software. Uh, however, uh, what does it mean to implement this in practice? How difficult it is and are stakeholders willing to do this or not? So uh, here, for example, when we look at the data, we will see uh, actually that we need quite a range of different types of data, and we have to tap into different data sources. Uh, not uh, no need to follow up on this. It's just uh, just want to impress you with a long list. Yeah, sometimes even you have uh, manual effort to do to collect all of the data that you need, especially when your own digitalization is not yet there where you are dreaming of, uh, then you have to do a lot of manual recording uh, to understand your production process, which puts an additional effort uh, on your transformation agenda. So in theory, uh, there is the potential with, uh, to create a win-win situation with material flow management, because uh, if you ask any uh, corporate decision maker, why should I invest uh, there? Well, most likely there will be savings which can pay off the cost and uh, reaching more sustainability in my production or the life cycle or balance of my product that supports the corporate or the brand image and definitely this is to my advantage so these are um, serious incentives on the other hand am i ready to go um, do i see actually the the savings potential uh, Am I convinced that uh, material flow management methods will make a change? Uh, do I have the data to and access to the data? And most critical also, do I have the people uh, to do this? This is also a very, mm, uh, one of the most critical uh, issues because uh, you have to, and you remember this triangle, processes, product, uh, systems, you need the the specialist, the expert in all three corners to work together and also top management to back this up uh, so that you need to practically move the whole organization in this direction. It is not only a one man, one woman show uh, that doesn't make any sense. So it, it needs this organizational effort. Uh, and uh, this is, I think, where most of the complexity of the issue is. Okay. A few words about sustain, because I will actually want to use some examples from this uh, project. Uh, this is a collaboration project between uh, the HTV Berlin and uh, GUC, uh, funded by the DAD. You see here that it actually ends 2020, but we applied for a prolongation due to the pandemic, but the decision is still uh, pending. 
but we are positive that this will happen very soon. And just before, maybe some of you have visited or attended the workshop that we did one year ago, uh, where we actually invited about 50 uh, partners from uh, the industry and introduced uh, the approaches and also to um, introduce them to the consultancy offers that the SUSTAIN project is uh, aiming for and the way how we are proceeding. Uh, because we, as we said, we, we need uh, consultancy trainings both in digitalization and sustainable production, uh, at least for most of the stakeholders here in, uh, in Egypt. So we introduce them like to different uh, packages throughout the consultancy uh, life cycle. Um, even on the last uh, row, you see hire the expert uh, saying that uh, we are training budgets on uh, this material flow method and actually they then can uh, implement this if uh, in your company if you do not uh, trust uh, the consultancy or you do not want to invest. And by the way, uh, I'm sure if you can see here the uh, website sustain under the MET subdomain slash sustain. Uh, you find all the information about the project. Okay, uh, the project actually has done a number of case studies. We don't have time to look into all of these. I just want to give you a, sort of an, a taste of what has been on the agenda for these uh, case studies. Uh, for example, we have looked into uh, modern furniture world, so a producer of uh, metal and wood furniture. And here the main themes were uh, transportation of process parts, material losses uh, because the, uh, the incoming sheets were not fitting the machinery and the process, uh, the hazardous painting process uh, was one of issues which were being looked into. Um, in another company, a security lock manufacturer, uh, the recommendations then were we use higher grade aluminium, uh, optimizing the mold design, uh, change the layout, enable heat exchange between injected products and raw materials. So these are very specific. Uh, you have to look at every company itself, every production process. There is mm, some general hints where you probably find something, but you have to analyze every process again. Uh, and a new way to identify what really fits for this particular firm. Many of you probably know the, the company Barik, which is also subject to uh, the material flow analysis uh, the, uh, in uh, plastic bottle recycling. And here also the task was to identify material and energy hotspots. And they were quite happy with this uh, analysis. And the last one I want to mention, maybe a little bit, uh, two minutes more, was the study about uh, Vitrocolor, um, a glass recycler in Fayum. And uh, so this recycling process to create new items, glass items, goes through these uh, process steps, which you can see here in the middle of the bubbles. And uh, so there was a lot of data being collected from the different production lines from uh, the uh, all over uh, how much materials uh, being used and uh, even the, also the uh, employee effort and wages and electricity and to have a, a full cost accounting for the production process, uh, which was then done based on the, on the top is the overall production net, with, but it also has subnets like uh, the one on the lower left. And in the end, there were like suggestions uh, that uh, exhaust heat uh, that is leaving the oven could be gathered, directed uh, to the annealing furnace and could be even used in preheating some of the broken glass before entering the oven itself, um, thereby contributing to a lower electricity and natural gas consumption. Uh, by this way, and this is sort of the outcome, I'm, I'm, I'm showing this to what we are presenting to the stakeholders or what this, this method can present to the stakeholders as incentives to move in this direction. So you have an impressive, uh, this is sort of based on this, uh, these measures. Um, if implemented, the scenario would reduce uh, significantly the, the CO2 package for the, for the products, and it would even increase the revenues, uh, which you can compare from uh, the black numbers, EGP, from 140,000 to 166. 
six per, I don't know, uh, 6,000 kilogram or whatever. So, uh, 6,000, uh, six tons, yes. Okay, so um, this is what the method can deliver. And now the big question is uh, will it actually happen? And these are the last uh, one, two, three slides in the presentation. How do we progress in digitalization and sustainable production? As I said, it needs guidance in both fields, unless you have already a company uh, in front of you which has been investing in these fields quite a lot, then of course it is much easier. But the further away, the less, uh, the more the uh, company is at the beginning of the road, uh, the higher the effort, effort in terms of guidance. Uh, and this comes along with you need uh, much more capabilities of uh, staff uh, in terms of expertise, but also of organization in terms of um, uh, business process management, production management, uh, strategic management, uh, and to align and to organize uh, corporate change. Uh, all of these issues is really something which not every organization is able to do. Uh, we have seen in theory, yes, there is, uh, it's possible to applying these methods that we reach a higher resource efficiency and cost savings and sustainability gains uh, at the same time, but there is no guarantee. So it is also a risk is always remaining. Okay? So when there are success factors for uh, achieving this and these are not trivial. Also, what I don't want to leave um, unmentioned is uh, the material flow management at first has uh, very much a focus on efficiency and effectiveness. And it may push aside actually reimagining the way of doing business. Maybe I should more think about different products than trying to optimize my existing production. Uh, so far, the, the methods in this direction are not well developed so of course it's much more a creative um, aspect of the whole story but I think there is also more research to be done uh, to be combined with the existing methods. To give you an idea of this complexity to get the stakeholders moving uh, um, because this is what we need actually we need stakeholders as movers otherwise it will not happen. And uh, this is sort of the set of questions we asked uh, the business partners when they attended the workshop. Uh, and you see that the first four questions are all related to uh, strategic management uh, in terms of what is your digitalization strategy? What is, uh, so, or do you even need one? Are you developing in this direction? Well, how is your market and your market position and what drives you? Uh, what about your IT business alignment? Uh, what about your sustainability objectives? Uh, so this is at first something uh, we, you need answers to this question. Otherwise, you would not have a guidance how to move into digitalization and sustainability at the same time. The next two then are technical questions. You need your models, your data to represent the real production. Are you able to do this? You have uh, what kind of infrastructure and digital tools do you have? Uh, and how do you plan to upgrade? And we mentioned before the last one here, uh, is the staff, the staff qualified? Uh, what are the training and consulting needs? So these are the basic questions where you need answers for before you even are able to move, not to mention all the other challenges of organizational change and so on. Last slide uh, to summarize my presentation here, and uh, so that we still have a bit of uh, discussion time. The question was, can digital transformation contribute to sustainable production or how? In theory, yes, sure, because digital means can enhance the control of energy and material flows and identify potentials and even uh, relate this to um, economic uh, indicators uh, by this way producing decision support and create win-win situation. All of this sounds very nice and promising. However, in practice, uh, what is often underestimated, especially in a market or in an economy where the uh, 
experience with digitalization and sustainability is so far not, uh, has not reached very far, the amount and range of barriers and success factors are often underestimated. And, and this is my point with uh, Professor Khafif in the beginning, uh, the incentives often do not convince the stakeholders. Uh, from our discussions from the SUSTAIN project when we reached out, uh, in the case studies or in the workshop or at other opportunities, uh, the stakeholder said, yes, this uh, seems to be very convincing. This is very nice. We would love to move in this direction, but uh, I don't believe we will make it. Uh, so, or at least not yet. So they remain skeptical. They shy away from the risk. Uh, they, because they realize it takes a lot of aspects together. And uh, I'm uh, curious to see, to hear also your comments if you share this view. Uh, also, what I would like to um, debate or have a few comments, if you think that the barriers are mainly internally in the organization, or uh, maybe if the environment, the political, economical, and, or societal environment would be different, uh, maybe that would be the game changers, having more funding, uh, more asking for more compliance, making the energy much more expensive, uh, having more of awareness in the, or demand, market demand for sustainable products. So uh, there are many aspects which coming together where to make digital transformation uh, a success factor for sustainable, or transformation factor for sustainable production. We are not there yet. And uh, I am happy and inv invite everybody to join the SUSTAIN project and related research to move us further in the direction. Okay, uh, I've talked long enough. Uh, thank you for uh, listening and I'm awaiting your comments and questions. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Ralph, for the very interesting presentation that uh, uh, actually started with the theoretical framework for this transformation to stream production and ended with the practical uh, uh, application for uh, this um, uh, 3D uh, uh, size project and specifically to uh, sustain project that you are implementing. Thank you very much. Um, so now we have um, maybe five minutes for a couple more for uh, questions. Please raise your hand if you have any questions. Well, so Hafif, uh, um, I remember your, your comment from yesterday. If the stakeholders see the advantage, they would move. Uh, um, because, and I'm saying something yani, a bit different. What do you think? Yeah, this is really the big question. How can we make people move? Um, I think they are, they are, we have to apply different approaches or several approaches. Um, people move by pressure. So everyone has an inertia, going back to physics, and to make a body move, we need an effort. An effort, an additional effort, or an initial effort, and then also an, an effort to keep moving. Um, it's a bit similar to people, I think. Um, um, certainly there's a big lack of knowledge, lack of information on what is possible to be done and what alternatives could be done or could be implemented. Um, um, rather than continuing what we are what we are doing, and that counts for processes, for products, um, for anything. Um, so the lack of knowledge on alternatives, and then of course, if I go to an alternative, um, I will have a risk. Normally, we are dealing with new technologies which are not or possibly not yet really proven, and and people are scared away from possible failure. So then they might be afraid that the investment will not really pay off. And then of course, there are the idealists who say, yes, I want to do something even if I'm, if I'm paying additional money, which is normally not the case if you talk about a business. So a business has to have in the end um, a positive um, balance on, on this um, alternative investment if you, if you go for, for new processes or new technologies or a new product. Um, Paying off means I'm comparing what I have to what I will then have. And from there on, I can calculate my, my payback. But the question is on which basis? 
So if I'm going to the pure direct cost of a process um, and completely neglect the indirect cost on the social level, on the environmental level, et cetera, et cetera, then it's sometimes hard to prove the feasibility. If I'm um, honest and, and collect the entirety of cost, then it's quite easy probably to, to prove the feasibility. And there, of course, comes also into the game the regulations. What is really to be put into the equation? Um, but in some cases, it is uh, quite easy. Um, I can take my, my own example. Maybe some of the audience know, know, know it. I, I have land, and we were generating electricity by diesel generation. That was fine in, in order to drive the deep well pumps. So that was fine over the years until, surprise, the diesel price went up from one pound to seven pounds. So then our entire operation became non-feasible anymore and we had to, to work our brains to find alternatives. And quickly we found out that a, an investment into a solar plant was feasible. So we installed the solar plant and drove our pumps with solar energy. And I can tell you, because we talk about an off-grid solution, it was paid back within two years. So a two years payback period, I can, I think, can convince any investor to say, yes, it is something feasible if I can really control the technology, which was also um, marked with a couple of challenges. So it was not running from the first minute. So this taught me as well, um, yeah, there, there is information required, there is some courage uh, required. And if we have some positive examples next to us where we can prove, yes, it does work, and it has really given, um, um, or let's say shown the promised payback and, uh, and the promised feasibility, then I think investors can be convinced. But it is all, always, I think, a mix. Yeah, we need um, the legal or the regulatory part to accompany it. Um, and I'm quite happy that we have high, 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 high fuel cost here. Everyone is suffering, but this will bring us um, to uh, developing new technologies to our, the, our required behavioral changes. Um, and in the end, look at Germany. I mean, why do German cars, um, or let's say European cars, uh, <clears throat> consume far less fuel than American cars? because the fuel is more expensive. This has given a technological drive and um, development and inno innovation. Um, and, and altogether, I think the effect is positive. So it is a mix, I think. And we have to, to work on, 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 on all the areas from social, um, behavioral, um, educational, um, process-related, regulation-related, finance-related, of course. So I I think in the end it is a mix. Thank you, Sebastian Mahmoud, for your uh, uh, participation and answer. So uh, I think Professor Dure, you have a question. Yeah, thank you for the interesting presentation. Um, on your first one, you know, can digital transformation contribute to sustainable projection? I would ask a question back or put a thesis in that say digitalization or digitization will reduce the number of excuses not to go for sustainability um, because the technology takes over so many things which you know, beforehand may have been manual or too costly to go for. So how about that thesis in return, that uh, hypothesis in return? Uh, well, the history of um, information system application also revealed that uh, the, it seems in theory that it's obvious that IT or information systems will bring advantages to the company, but uh, there are so many failures of uh, IT projects uh, in history around the world and still ongoing, uh, especially also with ERP systems or enterprise systems, uh, where companies have invested millions uh, and, uh, or maybe billions EGP, uh, so, so much um, uh, financial resources and still did not get benefit. 
So uh, you have excuses. I will subscribe to your view that the excuses on that hand get less. On the other hand, uh, the more sophisticated the technology is, the more excuses you also have. Well, there are so many risks and I don't have the staff to do this. And uh, I, there are so many side investments I have to make. Uh, it doesn't make uh, any sense to bring high um, level technology to a company where I don't have the people that are actually able to run it. Uh, so then it seems to be more wise to stay with the production process as is, also for economic reasons and actually even for uh, sustainability in terms of at least I can control uh, the other one. It might not, uh, if it fails, uh, nobody is actually uh, having a benefit at all. It is uh, this double edged sword. I mean, the sword. It is uh, the, the IT uh, reduces the excuses, but it also gives you more excuses. Uh, okay, Dr. Noha, you have a question? Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Al, for this very interesting uh, presentation, uh, which is very far from my field, so I, I actually learned a lot. Uh, my question is, it seems that uh, digital transformation and sustainable production are very dynamic processes, you need, they need dynamic processes. To what extent is the material flow management and the process that you showed also dynamic as opposed to static, you know, and a streamlined process. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by dynamic. I mean, digital transformation, of course, is yes. an ongoing process. So it is a continuation where you have uh, to have a strategy. It starts with strategy the same as for if you want you make your company more sustainability or if you want to increase CSR or whatever, you need a strategy. How do you want to move step by step into this direction? Because it will not happen overnight. Uh, so you need a mid-range long-term strategy, how, what kind of objectives you want to reach in this direction and how your investments will add up to each other. Uh, so this is an ongoing process. I don't know if you mean this by, dyna by dynamic. The, me yes. the method of uh, material flow management, uh, this alone is um, uh, a method which had been around for like, let's say, 30 years. Uh, so already in the 90s, it had been uh, developed and started to being used. The software also is in the first version has been available since then. So this is not something new and it is sort of a, um, almost traditional technique to use digital means to understand uh, your production processes. Uh, but you can use the software and adapt to new production lines whenever you want. I mean, you, the, uh, the linkage between the real physical production and the digital representation uh, should be done in a way that you can easily uh, follow up and adapt to changes that happen in the uh, actual manufacturing process. But I'm not sure yes, if I got your uh, yes, question. Yes, this is what I mean. I mean, we need a set of guidelines, a streamlined process. This is as far as I understand, because uh, you need to, to, to go through with digital transformation or to go through with sustainable production with all the complexities of uh, having factoring in all the sustainability dimensions, I think you need something that is um, that you can adapt to changes and go back and reiterate the process again. You know, so this is my question. Yeah. Yeah, of course, in, in, in principle, you can. I mean, if you have a digital twin, you can uh, always rerun, change anything digitally first before you make it physically. And by this way, you have much more opportunities to be flexible and uh, implement changes. Technically, uh, this is not the problem. So the whole problem of uh, using digital transformation or digital means for sustainable production, it all comes back to management questions and stakeholder uh, incentives and actually willingness and able, ability to move. So technically, everything is pretty much clear. Thank you. Thank you again, Professor Al, for the very insightful presentation. And thank you, everyone, for participating.